Hello everyone, I hope you're all doing great today and enjoy these stories. Make sure you check out my Patreon in the description for early access and my podcast in the description below too. I have a quick message before the story starts, so if you want to go straight to the stories and there's timestamps in the description below. So for today I'd like to share this. I think whatever you're struggling with, it's very important to not understate the importance of exercise and maintaining your health. It can be easy to let it go if you feel down and bad, but honestly it's really paramount that you can maintain a relatively healthy lifestyle because it does have major links to your mental health that you might not realise, especially if you've not necessarily exercised before, so I think it's something important to consider and it can probably make a big difference, so I hope that can help someone. I hope you enjoy and have a great week. Take care. I'm a fuck ranger. And even when I'm off duty, I absolutely love to go camping. Now this is something that had never changed and has been something I've really done for a long time. I used to go with one of my best friends, but we kind of become distant after he moved for college and I did. So often I'd end up going tenting alone and camping. Now there was one particular trip that I went on that seemed perfectly normal. Now I had to drive a good 3 or 4 hours to actually get to here, so it is a relatively long trip I guess. At the time my car didn't have a working radio so it was relatively annoying. I mean I could get it to work sometimes but I'd literally have to hit the side until it come to life. Now I didn't set off too late, I actually set off relatively early in the morning, and the drive up there was beautiful. I'd love to say I had music playing but like I said, I didn't have any of that, so I just had the windows down using the air to help keep me wake up. It's a technique I've deployed before when I felt extra tired. I drank all my coffee too, so I didn't have much else I could do. Now, when I start doing this, I realise that an absolutely massive bug has come into my truck and I actually almost crashed into some trees just because it made me jump. This thing come a couple of inches from my face and I promise you it was the last thing I expected. Luckily I managed to swipe it out of the window and end up doing off all the windows again. Now, on my drive the sun's just starting to rise and it's really beautiful. It's actually a little bit blinding really and I have to put on my sunglasses and put down the thing on top that kind of covers the light. I don't know what it's called but you know what I mean where you can sort of store papers and stuff. I was actually quite hesitant to get this thing down on my truck because I was 100% convinced that a massive creature was going to come out like had come in the window earlier, but luckily nothing was there. So I continue on my drive, and I do realise that there's another truck behind me, not too far off. I haven't noticed it before, but something about it just seems a little weird. Originally I think it's actually one of my friends who has a similar one, but I realise this is different. Also, all of the windows are really tinted out. In fact, I don't think it was legal how tinted these windows were, but hey, I'm not an officer, I'm just going here to enjoy my trip. Now my new friend of mine followed me for a good hour, and I do think it's pretty odd. I would every so often see another car or truck going past, but not that often and especially none that were following me. I decided that I was going to park off at the side of the road to use the toilet. Now I'm a little bit embarrassed to admit that, but I was relatively desperate and the coffee had kind of got to me and I drank a lot before. So I pull over quickly. I'm so desperate that I forget about the truck behind me and I run off into the woods. It's funny because I probably look like a madman, but hey, I was desperate. I'd gone quite far because I really didn't want anyone to see me, and I knew if anyone recognised me as being a ranger I'd probably get in a lot of trouble for it. It's extremely unlikely, but it's just something that ran through my mind. So I run off and alleviate myself. Just as I finish, there's a massive spider just next to my foot. I jump back and kind of kick some leaves in its direction and it scurries off. Thank god that thing didn't go up me when I was using the toilet, I think to myself and kind of laugh. I then hurry back to my truck because I'm getting a little bit cold, because the trees are actually blocking out some of the sunlight. I quickly adjust my rear view mirror to make sure I can see good when I'm driving, and I notice the truck has stopped again. 
it stopped just out of sight, but this is weird because it's been with me for at least an hour. Maybe they assumed it was a rest stop? I don't know, pretty unrealistic. I decide I should start driving forward and just keep an eye on it. I'm glad to say that it eventually goes out of sight and I continue on and I quickly forget about the truck. Now there's a good chance that maybe they just decided that they were going to stop in the same place as me and presumed that was what you're allowed to do here, but I'm not so sure to be honest. Something about it just seemed broody off and odd. But anyway, I was happy that there was no weird bugs or insects around me at this point and I continue on my way. And that's the most important thing for me now. I continue driving and I still have a couple of hours left now. It's not too much further, but I was starting to get a bit bored, not having the radio on. I think maybe that was making me a little bit overcautious and overthinking everything, because you know, when there's nothing there to distract you, I guess your mind can kind of run wild and get away from you. I continue and I eventually make it to the area that I love to go camping. Luckily enough for me, when I pull up, I don't see another car in sight which is absolutely gorgeous for me. I'm someone who likes being around people, but I suppose where I have to do it relatively often for my job, I appreciate having uninterrupted time within nature. Now, the area where I park my car is far away from a big flooded area. Well, it's not really flooded, it's from rainfall, but I do not want to fall in this because I know if I get wet out here, I'm going to have a nightmare trying to dry off my clothes and I don't really have enough to not be in trouble if that happens. I quickly grab everything from out my truck and I make my way through the gate. I then continue and make my way over to the main path. There's some areas that I've camped in before around here but I want to get away from people so I decide to continue on. I had some really nice boots with me that I'd bought. They weren't ones I used while I was on the job, they're just ones that I found really comfortable. They're very lightweight too. I'm actually trying my best not to get them dirty, which is something I'm quite embarrassed to admit, because I know if some of my ranger friends had heard me admit that, they would probably give me endless grief for it, but I really like my shoes and wanted to keep them tidy. I have some camouflage pattern on too, which is something I always liked to wear when I went out into the woods. It sounds stupid, but I like the idea of being able to hide from animals and things if I really need it, but of course you're always going to get ones that can just smell you, but hey, it made me feel a little bit better. Now no, I didn't have a camouflage match in tent too, which would be really funny if I did, but I kind of wish I did, but I'll get to that later. Now I eventually make it to my camping spot, and I quickly get a fire going. I decide that I'm going to cook some food, and I want to collect as much firewood as I can so I don't have to do it in the following morning. Now everything's normal and I actually really enjoyed the first night. I remembered laying back on my sleeping bag, which I had just poking out of the tent. I was staring up at the stars and for the first time in my life I saw a shooting star, which I thought was really cool. I jokingly made a wish to myself that I'd make it out of there in one piece, which I actually thought was really funny at the time. With my head rested on the side, I can hear some kind of rustling off in the trees around me. Now, I'm a little bit worried that it's some kind of animal, but I stop for a moment just to try and figure out what this is. The fire's gone out at that point, so I'm pretty sure they can't see me, unless it's just some of the burning embers that are going strong still from my fire. Now, I'm almost certain I can make out the sound of somebody calling out for help. What's really weird is it sounds like my brother. I know that's impossible though because he's about five states over, and I'm certain he's not here with me. I think maybe it's some form of delirium and my mind playing tricks on me, and I decide that I should probably get some sleep, and I needed the rest. I guess I'm kind of freaked out from what happened earlier still and haven't realised it and maybe my mind's just playing tricks on me. I really need the sleep. I get into the tent and I try and convince myself that this is an owl. But every so often I just faintly hear it, 
almost like it's perfectly in place for me to hear my brother calling out for help just as I'm about to sleep. Yeah, that's it. It must be my mind, I tell myself. You're half fading in and out of consciousness, just get some rest. I eventually manage to sleep. I wake up the next day and I feel absolutely terrible. I have a really bad headache and I really struggle to get out of bed. I start to question whether it was something I've eaten or drinking, but everything seems to be fine. I actually go and smell my food to make sure that it's not gone off, but everything's fine. I think this is quite bizarre and I think, oh, maybe I'm a bit unwell and I should probably head back soon. I decide the best thing to do now is not to pay too much attention to it and just to head on. I think if I'm really unwell, I can always head back sooner and I'm happy to do so. I then start on my journey once again. Now for this part of my trip I'm going to do some fishing which is something I love so I'm quite excited for this. I have all my bait and everything with me and a fishing rod so I head off. I make it over to the area that I like to do fishing in and I cast my reel. I fumbly knocked over my bait and I'm quite annoyed because all of the little maggots and things are now swimming in the water and I'm not going to be able to get them back easily. I could say, ha, oh, I guess it's no fishing now. I ended up waiting for a good few hours, but unfortunately, there was no fish for me to catch that day. I jokingly say, ha, oh, well, you're going to enjoy this food I've left there for your fish. I then turn to leave and start gathering up my stuff, and I can hear somebody scream, no you're not, just off in the distance, just out of earshot. I pause for a moment. I'm convinced the fish aren't talking to me, but I'm not certain now. Maybe I'm really unwell and I'm starting to hallucinate and imagine things that aren't actually there. I then laugh and say, ha, huh, say it again. I didn't realise anyone else was here, and I met with complete silence. Now I think this is extremely odd because I clear as day heard somebody respond to what I just said, but the thing that really gets to me is the distance. I didn't say my part very loud, but they said theirs very far away, so how could they have possibly heard me? It doesn't make sense. I go to turn around, and I can faintly see the embers from a fire just off in the distance, with another not too far off to the side of me. I realise maybe I've intruded upon someone else's sight and decide to leave quickly. I don't want to mess with whoever's here, and they seem a little bit weird, I decide and I head back to the camp. Now it was relatively dark when I started to head back and I have a horrible feeling that something bad's about to happen, but being a ranger, I convince myself it's nothing and just to calm down and stop being silly. When I'm making my way back however, there's something I've realised that's just odd. I can still see the faint glow of embers near the water, but I don't smell any fire and I definitely don't see any smoke, and surely if somebody was there recently I would have realised that there would have been some sign. I was too scared honestly to investigate further at the time, but I know that I have to make it back to my campsite now to be within relative safety. I'm annoyed at myself for knocking over all the bait and the water too and decide just to get home, make some nice food and call it a night in my tent. I go over there to do that, and I just put all my things down and everything seems to be back to normal as it was, but it isn't exactly. Some of my things have definitely been moved, and I'm actually seriously questioning whether I'm very unwell and haven't realised it. I mean waking up and feeling terrible, knocking over the bait so clumsily, and not realising where my things are when I've returned. I put all of this down to food poisoning, or something I've drank that I definitely shouldn't have, and that I need to cut the trip early. I say yeah, just make the trip early, and I decide just to tuck into some of my favourite food earlier than I was supposed to, because I know I'm going to be going back the next morning. Now I make it back into my tent, and I stayed up for what must have been 2 or 3 hours, trying to listen to make sure that there was nobody around me at the time. I can't hear anyone. And that's when I remembered it again. Why did I hear my brother calling out my name? I must be really unwell now. 
and I slowly, slowly start drifting in and out of consciousness, but somehow I'm just about able to keep myself awake. When I hear it, it screams for help once again, this time closer. Now, it's not in my brother's voice this time. I don't actually recognize the voice, but it sounds very real. I wait for a few moments to try and listen, and I'm met with silence again. I really think that my mind's going now, but I know this was real. I decide to slowly unzip my tent, grabbing my knife. I took my head out of the tent cautiously, and I'm met once again with nothing. I'm now extremely annoyed because there's either someone in danger that I'm not helping or I'm imagining all of it. And I decide that I have to investigate. I quickly put on my warmer clothes and head out. What's worse is I don't really have much charge on my flashlight. I have to use it very sparingly and only in flashes. But the problem is my eyes aren't really adjusting to the darkness and I can't rely on my light source so I have to keep this in mind. I decide I'm going to use a technique that we've been taught in ranger school. I'm going to circle around the perimeter of my tent and make my way back again. I do have quite a good idea of my bearings and I guess it's from being a ranger that really helped me out with that. So I head out in one direction and make my start. Now initially everything seems normal. I make it about 100 yards away from where my tent is and I turn back and realise that I may have not put out the fire as well as I thought I had. I realise that I can still see a red glow coming from just off to the side of my tent. Just as I turn back to make sure I put it out correctly, it goes off suddenly. I think this is really bizarre but I don't think much of it and continue my search. There's either somebody out here on drugs or somebody who's really needing help and is in danger and might be injured. Maybe they've been out here for weeks, who knows, and I might be their only way to safety. I decide that I have to figure out what this is, and I continue the search. The thing is, I don't find anything, until suddenly, help, right next to me. I'm convinced it's a person now because it's at head height, and I turn around and I can see it's something just behind the tree. I think this is pretty weird because why can't I see this person? The tree is very small but I can hear this. I can hear help once again. I then get closer to the tree and I realise that there's a speaker taped to the side of it. I think this is really weird. In my frustration of something scaring me so much I ended up punching it and breaking it. I didn't hear the cry for help again. I think this is really odd, thinking maybe some stupid hunters put it out here, thinking it's going to attract some kind of weird god knows what, and I shouldn't have stumbled upon it. I decide that I should really get back and maybe get some sleep now. Now I'm absolutely exhausted by this point, and I know hiking back's an option, but it's going to be virtually impossible because how far I have to go. I decide the best thing I can do at this point is pick up all of my belongings and set up camp somewhere else. So I go back to my tent. I'm very cautious to make sure no one else is around me and I gather my things. It takes me a good 20 minutes to put everything away and the whole time I have my knife in my pocket where I can very easily grab it and get anyone if I need to. Now I try and act very confident portraying the fact that I'm not scared, but really I feel terrified. The weirdest thing is I'm not convinced whether this is anybody actually out here or not at this point. I'm pretty certain it's my mind playing tricks on me because of something I've eaten or drank, so I'm not too worried if that makes sense. I get all of my things together and I head off. I only go for about 20 minutes or so because I'm not really sure what direction I'm heading in. Once finding a really good spot, I set my tent up and set a whim for the night, and I must have passed out. I wake up in a dream where everything's a very warm colour and it seems to be daylight. It's almost like just as the sun started to come up and everything's very beautiful and you feel very warm. I realise it must be daylight now and I force myself to wake up. 
I go to touch part of my tent and it's extremely warm. I think this is odd, but luckily I can get out another way and I quickly do that. And I'm blinded. Literally, it's like staring at the sun for a second and I turn around. And suddenly I smell smoke. Now my brain suddenly kicks to life. Something's off here. I quickly worm my way out of the tent, and I've realised now that it's not daylight, it's nightfall, it's still the same night, and my tent is on fire, and some of my belongings around me. I look, and everything I own virtually is on fire, and my tent is starting to collapse. I think this is a dream, and I wipe my eyes frantically, but it isn't. I reach down for my knife quickly. I scream out, hey, who is this and what are you doing to me? Still not entirely sure if it was an accident or not, but then I realised there's no fire here. I left my original campsite. I realise now that something has set fire to my tent while I was sleeping, sleeping, and if I hadn't have woke up when I did, I wouldn't be here now. I would be literally starting to set on fire slowly trapped in my tent. I want to say I was brave, and I wait to find whoever this sick person or whatever this thing was to get them with the knife, but I wasn't. I ran. I ran for my life. I turn around quickly and continue in the direction that I would have went if I continued hiking for a good spot. I didn't care where I was going, I just had to get out of here. I can't hear anything else behind me luckily. Just the sounds of the fire behind me. The thing that's worse is the fire is actually spreading now and I'm quite worried there's going to be a big forest fire. There's enough dry leaves to set up half of this place, but that's a later issue. I continue going, constantly glancing back and realising that I must have covered some distance because the fire is getting more and more distant from my view. Eventually I've slowed down a bit and just start climbing up a hill. I take one last look back at the campsite, the last I'll ever see of my tent, and I can just about make out a figure next to the fire, standing there, certainly staring in my direction. That was more than enough for me to know that this wasn't just in my mind, this was all very real and it wasn't an accident that I caused. I turn round and I hike for another good 40 minutes in the cold night air, with the moonlight as my only guidance. Being a ranger I have a very good idea of where I'm going luckily, and I manage to make it back to an area that I know quite well. I loop round back onto the small path that's going to lead me back to my car. This is when I break out into a sprint again when I can see my truck. I quickly get in, and almost on autopilot get it into reverse. Now my adrenaline must have been going really strong because I actually can't remember turning the keys to the ignition just the engine come into life. Again, I don't remember driving down the road, but I drove for another 45 minutes until I make it to a local town. I immediately pull over into a bar because it's one of the only places that is still open now. I walk in and demand to use a phone. I don't even explain what's happened. They must have been able to see that something was wrong because they handed me the phone without asking anything. I quickly called the fire department and alert them that there might be a forest fire, and then I called the police and explained what's happened, and I also called into the ranger station that I worked at just to explain that I wouldn't be coming into the work for the next few days because something that happened. Now at first they thought I was drunk because there's a music in the background, but something about my tone told them otherwise. I was eventually able to meet up with the police a few minutes later and explain exactly what happened. They told me that they were going to send out a squad to investigate. A few moments later, I heard a fire truck scream and passed too. Someone offered me a beer, but I declined because I wanted to make sure I was 100% sure of what had happened as I made the police report. I went over to the truck and explained everything that happened and said, can I please just sleep now? I don't want to investigate this. I don't want to know anything else and they gave me their number so I can call back the following day. Nicely, they even offered to drive me over to a local motel where they paid for me to spend the night which I greatly appreciated. 
I made it into bed and completely passed out and woke up 12 hours later. This time I wasn't in danger and the light I could see around me was real and I felt completely safe this time and thank god for that. I call back the number again and the police inform me that they're still doing a continuing investigation and they can only tell me what they found from that first night. They said they had a good search and thankfully there was no big fire. It had already gone out by the time they got there, but there was still a good 50 or so square meters of scorched earth. They looked as hard as they possibly could for any signs of life or people out there that could have caused this, but all they found was a burnt out tape recorder just next to a tree that was burnt down. I then explained that I had actually heard voices on the tape recorder and they said thank you for the information as but of course this was completely burnt now and virtually useless for their case. I'm still waiting for updates but I'll let your imagination figure out what happened. I'm convinced, absolutely convinced that somebody was hunting me and was looking for a murder victim that day and they'd been stalking me from the truck, probably looking for someone they thought was innocent and an easy target to get out in the woods. But they probably didn't realise they were messing with a ranger, someone who knew that wilderness very well, and was able to use techniques to stay completely calm even though everything around them was going wrong. Now I've been sitting on this story for many years now, and it might not be as creepy as some of them on here, but it's really creepy to me. Now my aunt owned a large piece of land, literally over a hundred acres, in northwest Connecticut for many years now. Her property is located in a state park that is mostly uninhabited and only frequented by backpackers. Her land is well, well off any main roads, and you have to drive through quite a lot of forest to reach her home. She brought the land and remodelled the old house that was already built on it, so it was more livable. And going up to visit her has always been my favourite thing to do. I've been going very early since I was actually a baby and spent countless hours exploring the woods, creeks and land around the house. We'll call it the farm, although it's not really a true one as there's not any agriculture or livestock there. My auntie does have some rescued miniature horses, alpacas, donkeys, and other animals like ducks. Well, back in the day, really. Now, the animals are on par with some of the best protected in the area, and they're very happy and have a great life there. They're actually quite chubby, really. Now, the rest of the farm is untouched woodlands. In the early 2000s, she decided to install a 12 feet fencing around the property. Although it only encloses about 80 acres of land she owns, she explained to me that she couldn't stand the sound of the coyotes howling right outside her window at night, and that she had some creepy encounters while living out here. She did not go into details of these since I was a young child. She lives alone though, so I understand why she wanted a sense of security living so deep in the woods. We are originally from the Bayous of Louisiana, so being in this type of environment was new to all of us. Anyway, despite being initially unfamiliar with the land, I eventually learned to navigate the area very well as a child. I had a few favourite spots, and one was up a small foothill in the deepest part of the woods. I would go up every so often that eventually a small path was established in the brush and I would bring my cousins with me to show them my little oasis. Now this is in 2008 when I was about 10 years old. I took a summer trip to my aunt's and brought my best friend Alex with me. She and I often took trips here together during our childhood and this was not her first time accompanying me to the farm. I remembered that we were in the woods at my favourite spot sitting together listening to Katy Perry playing Doodle Jump on our new iPad touches. This makes me laugh but we were just trying to enjoy some nature while getting a feel of our new tech I guess. We were there for a while enjoying ourselves and talking about random kid stuff when there was a shift in the air, almost like a suffocating stillness and silence settling upon the woods. I paused the music and looked to Alex who 
was already staring at me with a concerned expression on her face. We stayed still and silent for a minute, tilting our heads to listen to the words and search out any unfamiliar sounds that normally would bellow out throughout the farm and night, but there were no birds, no summer bugs, and the trees almost seemed to be frozen in place. As if it was like winds that would usually rustle amongst us was completely vacant. It was a horrible, vulnerable feeling that Alex could feel too. Then began the sound of footsteps coming from even deeper in the woods. It took a moment for me to determine what the sound is, but the distinct rhythm of weight being picked up and down on the leaves is impossible not to realise. It was very heavy sounding and was coming up towards us from a steep slope down the side of the mountain and foothill. I remembered thinking it was impossible for a human to move so easily through that part of the woods since it was very thick, with fallen branches and trees, even making it hard for an agile, slim child to navigate. I mean, let alone an adult. It felt as though the woods laid still, and we're waiting for the footsteps to come even closer. Do you hear that, Alex? I whispered and she nods. It sounds like footsteps. I continue and she nods again. Looking like she was about to burst into tears, I took her hand and began running down the makeshift path with her trying not to fall apart or let her lag behind me. We did not stop until we reached the house. I don't think we told anyone that day because we were just too shaken up to even comprehend what might have been out there. The next day, I said to Alex if she would go back to the spot with me. She was very hesitant but eventually agreed and said we could go back to look for other signs of humans. We made our way back, nervous but determined to discover what had invaded our little sanctuary. We reached the spot. I looked down towards the direction that we heard the footsteps. I think that I even slid down a bit to investigate the plausible indentations in the brush and leaves. Now initially I can't really see anything there. I didn't go too far because I was about to lose my nerve, and I hadn't noticed much anyway, so I decided to climb back up to where Alex was waiting for me very nervously. We decided that it must have been some kind of animal or deer, despite every logical explanation indicating otherwise. I knew what deer sounded like, and that wasn't a deer, but I wanted to forget and just have fun again. We took out our iPods and began the same ritual of relaxing and playing games while chatting about nonsense. It seemed like everything went back to normal really, or relatively. So we quickly forgot about the terrifying experience and let our native childlike wonder take over. After a little while, the stillness returned. It happened so quickly that we almost forgot about what happened before, however this time, the footsteps started almost instantly, seeming like it was a moment we forgot about them before. Now this was really weird because maybe if it was an isolated event we couldn't have questioned it too much but now we we're absolutely certain that this was real. Now the best way I can explain the sound and the location is similar to a spot that we went to the day before but somewhat more to the right of where the forest was, and it's very dark, and the incline to reach us is less steep. I didn't wait too long to run, but it was long enough to realise that the sound was fast and closer, definitely not a deer or bear. I did not look into the woods too closely because I wanted to get the hell out of there, and I was scared to see whatever it was. I knew it was close enough that it would be upon us at any moment if we didn't flee, so without a word, Alex and I took off and ran as fast as humanly possible out of the woods. It is not a super exciting experience, but really bizarre. I've actually since moved out, but I've never been able to forget this experience. I seriously don't have a clue what this possibly could have been. I doubt it was a person, so I'm really not sure what this was. A few years ago, my friend Tez and I set out on the Great American Road Trip. We were going to drive from New York to LA, 
zigzagging through the country for six weeks. Now we're both in our early 20s and pretty broke and my mum had a long haul truck and suggested that I saved a ton of money and we could actually sleep in the back of the hatchback. It was pretty cosy as a setup. We brought some blankets and sheets at Goodwill and cut one of them up to make curtains. Now by the end of the week, we got in so ready that we can really set up a camp in about 10 minutes. I mean luggage moved out to the front, curtains up, bedding down and ready for the night. Now we slept in parking lots, free campsites, rest areas, basically anywhere it seemed safe and semi-legal. There was never a night after the first night where we felt scared until the last week of the trip in Arizona. We were near Flagstaff and we had gotten pretty used to our routine. We didn't go on a set schedule and would never drive more than a few hours. No destination really in mind, outside a few must-see landmarks. We'd drive to places we found the night before on Google and take suggestions from other campers, locals and people we'd met. We'd also gotten very good at making friends. We went to Denny's with a group of rednecks we met at a campsite in the back of their pickup because I got hungry and overheard them saying that they were going to go. We met an 80 year old cowboy who took us out drinking and taught us how to line dance at a country bar. Now, we played the guitar with some musicians in the middle of a thunderstorm, got fed up really and decided that we're going to go hang out with some other people we met. We spent the 4th of July with a family who basically adopted us into their campsite. Basically, every encounter we had with a stranger was really a positive one. This night didn't appear to be any different. We found a free campsite on Google and drove into the woods following our GPS. We were pretty far out of town and something seemed a little off when we pulled up to the campsite. There was one RV parked and two cars further up in the trees. We pulled up near the RV and a man opened the door who said hello and he just stared. Now his expression was completely blank. Then as if she hadn't said anything he just slowly closed the window again and stared at us the entire time, figuring out that he wants some privacy and maybe we're being obnoxious. We pulled further down the road and found a flat spot to park the car. Instead of our usual routine of setting up camp immediately while it was still light out, we goofed around for a while and just had fun. Now my friend pointed out a campfire further down the campsite and we decided to go and be friendly. We'd met so many cool people from the previous few weeks that we actually wanted to go and chat and wander over. Now near the campfire were two men, the owners of the car we'd seen earlier. They seemed friendly and sat down to chat. They were drinking and smoking and we sat down and had a beer with them. One of the men seemed really off and we came out feeling that something was completely off and that maybe two of the men didn't actually know each other and the older man was definitely on some kind of drugs. He was spinning in circles and talking about UFOs, however he seemed harmless. This left us chatting with the younger man, who kept claiming to be a former park ranger. He was handsome and easy going and spent several hours just chatting about our trip, everything and then started talking about the bear. He'd seen a bear earlier in the forest. Now we don't really believe him and he pulls out his camera to show photos of it. It was very close to the campsite and we're both a bit freaked out. It wasn't unheard of for one of us to get up to go to the bathroom in the middle of the night so the idea of a bear being there scared us. Now as we said that the ranger laughed and his expression changes. It's hard to describe but his voice seems somehow cold. He said if you get out of your car in the middle of the night, it's not the bears you need to be scared of. I kept waiting for the laugh, but it never come. I laughed awkwardly and made a dumb joke about serial killers in the woods and my friend laughed as well and joked about the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. We moved on to another subject, but within 5 minutes the ranger who come back to it and was talking about something grabbing us out from the middle of the night in the car. 
No matter how he steered the conversation away from serial killers, he kept latching on. The older man was high as a kite at this point, and was staring at the stars and not talking. We'd just awkwardly laugh or sip our beer and try to get the conversation elsewhere. Then the ranger stood off and walked towards the caller to get another beer. At this point it's pitch black out. I can't see anything outside of the circle of light from the campfire. The beer caller was outside of that circle. Suddenly, there's a red dot in the darkness and it took a moment for me to realise it's a camera. The ranger's holding a camera. He's taken a photo of us. I could see the screen on the digital camera light up. Now it wasn't odd for people that we've met to take pictures with us. My friend is gorgeous with dark hair, blue eyes, like a young Megan Fox, and we're friendly. People like having pictures of themselves too, but it was an entirely strange thing to have this person taking photos of us without asking, or even any indication of what was about to happen. We were both staring at him like deer in headlights at this point, but instead of realising what he's doing is weird, he suddenly checks his camera, adjusts some things and takes another, with no flash, no asking us to smile or anything, and no explanation. At this point, he comes back and sits down with us, not saying a word about the photo. At this point, me and my friend are very freaked out. We make some rubbish excuses that we need to set off our campsite and nope the hell out of there. When we both start to leave, the UFO guy smiles and says have a good night. Ranger however looks at us with a smile that doesn't reach his eyes and says be careful out there, there's more than bears in the woods. Now at this point every hair on my body stood on end. I wasn't alone in my discomfort either because my friend laughed a response and pulled away with me quickly towards the car. We rushed back to the car, which we only found in the dark by reference in the RV, and jump in the front seat so my friend is almost hyperventilating. Why did he take a picture of us? I read that serial killers sometimes warn their victims. She stared at me for a second and locks the car doors. Do you think he just took pictures of us? Now we're both really freaked out and she's in complete panic and quickly turns on the headlights. I immediately yell at her to turn them off because he's gonna know exactly where our car is. God knows why, but this is the only night that we'd not set off our camp. We didn't need to tear anything down, so we just get in the car and floor it out of there. And as we got onto the dirt road, the ranger was walking towards our car with that same expression. I hope I never see him again. I had a really weird experience in the Conagri National Park outside of Columbia last winter that brought me to this sub. Now I live in Columbia SC and frequented CMP so I'm familiar with the area. I often jump the fence and walk the boardwalk at night. It's very peaceful to walk the swamp and hear all the wildlife. Now, they never have a ranger or guard here after hours, so I always go alone. The last time I did this was in October 21. I was taking my usual stroll with the flashlight in hand. I should mention again that, between the insects and frogs, the sound is loud. But then, it completely stopped when I was about a mile in. I heard what I thought was my wife call me from the trowel ahead, but she wasn't there. I was alone and she was out of town. I then heard water slosh into my right and saw nothing with my flashlight. I chalked it up as being tired and kept it moving. The wildlife started up shortly thereafter and everything was fine. Maybe 15 minutes later, I noticed that it got eerily quiet again and I heard the swamp water slosh into my left. This time, however, it was more deliberate, like somebody walking almost. I was in a thick proportion, and I couldn't see more than 20 feet in front of me, and then I heard my wife's voice again. Again, she wasn't with me and was out of town. Certainly moving through a swamp at 1am was not an option for her. I saw what looked to be a human silhouette for a split second, but it was aft, very pale and skinny, and taller than me at 6 feet. 
I noped out of there and ran almost the entire two miles back to the truck and didn't slow down again until I could hear wildlife once more. Like I said, this boardwalk is just in the swamps. Nobody's walking around the water at night without a light or even, I don't know, any kind of animal that big shouldn't really be there. I feel that I should add that I wasn't necessarily in sleep deprived mode and I wasn't high or anything. I just liked the woods at night. I was so freaked by this that I had to share my story. I'm really convinced that what I encountered that day was actually a skinwalker or wendigo or something that can actually mimic voices. There's no way some meth head was stumbling through the forest and swamps miles from civilization and sounds exactly like my wife. My girlfriend at the time and I went camping, five hours away from her birthday slash our anniversary. We made the trip the day after a big storm passed through. We left town early and got there in the early afternoon. The guy at the entrance of the campgrounds mentioned there was no one else there and we're like, oh, this is going to be sick. First, we drove down these long pathways to get to our designated spot. As you got closer to it, the long road narrowed, so basically, you had to back out to get out. We unloaded the car, got the tent set up, and decided to go walk around the woods. It was dead silent, but it was still bright out, so we all took in the nature and walk a few miles away. We reached this point in the woods where there were some weird looking white cabins. They're very uniform, all built exactly the same way, like, I guess they were a part of a camping grounds, but... They seemed way out of the way, and there was no signs of life there. I felt eerie really to look at it, like we shouldn't be there. So we turned around and walked back. We took a breath and just relaxed for a while, and stare at the fire pit. Unfortunately, neither of us had been camping before, so we don't know how to start a fire. But luckily, we have some of those self-lighting logs from Walmart. I didn't know they existed, that's really cool. And some lighter fluid. But everything else around us was soaked to the bone from the rain that had passed the day before. We knew we needed some kind of kindling, but any dry sticks were few and far between, and nowhere to be found. Eventually, we got a small fire going and ate hot dogs and marshmallows and spent some time stargazing. Then we noticed how dark it was. My girlfriend was easily spooked and was like, can we get into the tent now? So we put out the fire and crawl into the tent. We're talking to each other, but I could tell she was tense. And suddenly she goes, shh, do you hear that? Before I could respond, I hear what appears to be footsteps like heavy ones and a group of people walking. I whisper to her, it's probably animals, but she says, no, it can't be animals. What animal sounds like that? We then sat and stared at each other in the dark for what felt like an eternity and we hear mumbling that gets loud along with the footsteps. Now it continues until it's right outside of our tent. We both froze. I don't think either of us were breathing. And then, silence. We waited and waited and I'm still not sure how much time actually passed and eventually my girlfriend said, we have to get to your car. The adrenaline was pumping now so I peeled out of the tent into the darkness and told her to stay behind. We then literally ran into the car. I locked the doors and she was like, what was that? We can't stay here. They said no one was out here but us, what was that? I kept looking around for signs of life but there was seemingly none. I looked at her and said okay, I'm gonna grab our stuff, you stay here. Now we only have our ice chest and our tent out. I hopped out, ran, grab everything, tossing it into the back seat. I'm just about to go for the tent and I hear footsteps closing in. In absolute terror, I yanked the tent out of the ground, wrapped the tarp around it and slang it over my shoulder like some panicked Santa Claus and shoved it into the trunk. I didn't say anything when I got into the car and said, Do we have everything in here? And my girlfriend said yeah and floored it in reverse. Then we came to a fork in the road that went in like six different directions. I asked my girlfriend if she remembered what path we come down to get here and she told me she didn't know. 
We chose a random one and ended up in a different camping spot. I cursed under my breath and slammed it into reverse again. Then I noticed from the angle that we exited that I could see the main path back to the gate, thanks to a small sign behind an overgrown bush. As we hightailed it out of there, I noticed there was a single small green light out in the woods near where our tent was. We drove the entire 5 hours back to our hometown and fell asleep on my girlfriend's parents' couch at 4am. We never spoke about the trip again, and I haven't desired to camp since, as you could imagine. Last summer, a good friend and I embarked on a backpacking trip through the White Mountain National Forest in New Hampshire. As fairly experienced day hikers, we felt comfortable in the whites with our inaugural overnight trip. While planning, my buddy Ellis figured we could hike to a backcountry campsite to make our first wilderness night a little more fun. I wasn't going to disagree. Beautiful views, historic trails, and protected night in the dry river wilderness. I was stoked, to say the least. Before any hiking trip I do, a little internet search on the trails or shelters I'll be coming across. Throughout the mid-1900s, there were a series of these lean-to-ups and down the drive river wilderness meant for backpackers or through hikers really looking to escape the crowds in more populated areas of the forest. Though as time went on, the forest service had other more pressing matters. Many of these shelters were dismantled, except Dry River Shelter 3, the last remaining shelter in the wilderness. On the morning of our hike, I met Ellis at the trail at the head and we set off. The sky was overcast, bringing with it a dense fog through the trees. The weather left us with nearly no visibility, so there went our sun and views. At least the trail consisted of prime, technical New England rock, scrambling alongside the river. Ellis and I made it up the presidential ridge, stopping by the lakes of clouds. The hut was filled with day hikers, backpackers, and through hikers all socialising together. We were even more rewarded with some sun, and a brief glimpse of the dry river valley on the summit of Mount Monroe before the fog rolled back in. With dwindling views and a stiff wind, Ellis and I hustled below tree line, down to the river shelter free, our home for the night. Once we dropped off the ridge into the valley, we entered the wilderness zone where the rangers patrolled sparing me. Time to really be alone in the wild. As we trek into the wilderness, all signs of civilization disappeared and the trail was densely overgrown. Although it had been raining all week, there were no footprints in the mud either. At least we'd have some relaxing isolation, I guess. After about an hour or so of descending, Ellis spotted the lean-to just as our legs were asking for relief. I look up, and there's this gorgeous old timber structure with a well-used fire pit alongside a cold mountain river, pristine camping. As we settled in and explored the site, I found a small, bound notebook nestled into the corner of the structure. On the cover someone wrote, Dry River Shelter Number 3. Out of curiosity, I opened it, but found nothing more than a lone man's name scribbled onto the first page and the date. Just your standard log camping log. Oddly though, the man signed the book the previous day. We saw no footprints or signs of human life or animal disturbances on the trail here at the shelter. Rain can wash away tracks, but not all signs of animal life. Something fell off to me. I showed it to Ellis, who found it curious but nothing more than the sign of a single man. He convinced me that he's probably a hiking veteran and a professional at LNT. I bought into Ellis's thoughts on the situation and my mind eases now. As the sun set, 
We started a roaring fire alongside the river bank. Ellis commented on how quiet the location was, having not seen another soul beyond the chirp of birds since leaving Crawford Path. The silence is eerie, but we figure that it's just civilization that's desensitized us to the wild that we're actually in now. The sun was setting, and we grew tired with darkness. Ellis took the lean-to, and I spent the night in my tent. Sleep came quickly after hiking 8 miles with 20 pounds on my back, but it doesn't last long. A brutally sharp snapping noise awoken me. The only thing I could compare it to would be a 2x4 smashing into a tree. I think, oh god, a bear's come to search our food and that's 50 yards away, but nothing out of the ordinary for New Hampshire. Sleep took over once again, and I remembered waking up to the sun rising over the peaks. How can you sleep with a bear there? I stumbled out of my tent to see Ellis also waking up slowly, as we made our morning oats and coffee. I wander around the site again to see if I can find the marks of bears left. Instead, I noticed something odd. The small notebook is open. I swear I put it back where I found it. Closed and in the back corner of the shelter, not open on the floor. Hey, Ellis. Were you checking out this camp log last night? Nah, I passed out, man. It's not like there's anything to read anyway. He responded. You sure? I comment as I bend over to pick it up. The lone hiker's name was not so lonely now. At least 20 more names have filled the pages. The lone traveller whose name was originally on the first page could now be found several pages deep into the notebook. I toss it to Ellis whose face instantly dropped when he sees all of the names on it. Great. Now I know it's not just dehydration or delusion from the previous day. Dude, we must have seen that thing last night. There's no freaking way we missed all these names. How could we? This is when I began to tell Ellis about the snapping noise during the night. I received nothing other than instant denial. These sounds were not the results of some hooligans or backward crazies following us. Ellis was convinced. It wasn't a bear either. Ellis led us out of the site and we instantly made our way back. A year has passed since then, and I'm still not quite sure what happened on our night at the Dry River Shelter 3. The memory of seeing a single name written on the front page is so clear in my mind now, I could not have mistaken it in. Could I have made the noises? Obviously not. I was asleep and they're further away. Ellis was asleep too. I would have seen him. I don't like to think it was paranormal, but he really begs the question. All logical explanations have went out the window. And of course a bear didn't write in there. It just terrifies me thinking of it now. I'm a 17 year old high school guy with a weak body. I live in a small town in the Philadelphines and this town is surrounded by rice fields with a highway going straight across it. Part of my usual weekend routine is to go jogging early in the morning. This is at some time around 5am. My usual jogging route is from my house, somewhere in the middle of town to a small hill with a wonderful view of town in the morning. To reach my destination, I would have to jog on the side of the highway. From time to time, fog would appear on the highway, and once you're inside, you can only see 10 or 15 feet before it all goes white. So one Saturday, I decide to jog. I invite one of my friends, the same age as me, to join me, since he follows the same route anyway. We left home at 5am, proceed to the highway. As usual, a thick fog blanketed the highway. The cars that would pass by had their lights on, and there were several one-ways because of road repairs. 
As we enter the fog, we decide to jog along the side of the road, past a couple of roadworks, about a hundred meters long each. Now all's well at this point. We're a bit exhausted, but otherwise fine. We barely encountered anyone else, and usually they're just fellow joggers. Then we come across another roadwork, and we saw this guy crouch down on the asphalt. He was wearing a dirty orange vest, and he had a similarly dirty hard hat on. We can't really see his face, but decide just to ignore it. He looks as though his fidgeting was something in his hands, so we thought he was just holding a few tools or something. Also, there was no one there but us, me, my friend and that guy. The fog's thick as hell. My friend signalled to me to keep a distance from the guy and I followed him. When we get closer, we can hear him humming a strange tune under his breath, which in of itself isn't that weird, but boy, we were wrong. As we get closer, he starts acting erratically. He stopped for a moment as I passed him, then starts laughing. It wasn't a regular laugh. It sounded sinister and a little dry. It was really loud, so it began to freak me out. We didn't increase our speed at this point, as we think he's messing with us. But he doesn't stop. He just kept laughing and laughing, and we knew it was beyond a prank. I can't describe his laugh more than, I just didn't trust it. We didn't look back. We were speeding up now, as we were starting to see the hill. I was gasping for air, but somehow I didn't let that stop me. I forced myself on, and my friend was doing the same. He was probably 50 meters behind us when I looked at him. He had stopped laughing, but now he was standing straight and staring at us. He called out to us in my language in an arranged tone. That's when adrenaline kicked in. I just ran and ran until we reached the hill. In hindsight, I don't know how I was able to push myself for so long. When we finally arrive at the top, we're exhausted and nearly collapse on a cement bench and stay there for over an hour. Like a breath of fresh air, my friend laughs in a comedic manner. We then walk towards home. I haven't ate yet, I was so hungry, and as we passed the road, we saw the guy in. He's no longer there. The only people there are wearing construction outfits that are working on the traffic signals, but nowhere near the man. As I got home, I told my parents about it and they said it's probably a nut job looking for someone to rob, who's probably stole the outfit, and I never went jogging again in the fog after that. This happened a few years ago when I was mountain walking. We started as a large group, but after some time of everyone choosing their own pace, I end up walking alone. I was walking downhill through a thick forest area when I slipped on an unsteppable part of the trail, falling fully. It hurt quite a lot. Before I could get up, I see a deer walking out of the trees to my left, standing in front of me. This is not natural, because deers usually avoid human contact. Something was really off about this deer, I didn't know what. Its eyes appeared lifeless, filled with uneasiness. Then it opened its mouth to show multiple rows of what appeared to be razor sharp teeth, and let out an ear shattering scream. It sounded like nothing I ever heard before. It shouldn't exist. I watched quite a lot of horror movies, and yet none have come close to the scream of this. It was so demonic. After that scream, it closed its jaws and walked away to the side of the woods. Now I've never told this story to anyone else before, but I'm sure what I saw was a wendigo. It just horrifies me knowing that I saw this thing. For a second when it happened I thought maybe I've hit my head, 
but I had no head injuries whatsoever and I knew exactly how I landed. It almost put me off running in the woods entirely. When I was young, I worked as a backpacking guide in Western NC. My schedule dictated a full eight day shift with six days off. During those six days to myself, my other co-workers and me would play in the woods. In the summer, you can't beat a mountain swimming hole. One of our favorite activities was called Paradise Falls, alternatively called Wolf Creek Falls. This is a cliff jumping spot with a huge swimming area, a tiny slot canyon and an inner pool. Most will venture just to do the small jump, even though it's the smallest and arguably least accessible. Even though the jump is almost 9 foot at most, you must do 10 minutes rock scaling to get there. We are all adventuring in and out from inside this tiny canyon, and you can't see the main pool. Well, we got to the jump and coaxed the first person off, a fellow guide who had never been to the spot before. She jumped successfully and swam into the main pool and beach area. Then she screamed because she was now out of sight. Myself and another guy jump in together and swam the short distance to her, with the others in tow. Of course we figured she was injured somehow. She was treading water and just staring wide-eyed at the riverbank. When I looked to the shore, there stood a man. He's massive, easily 6'7", and appears to have no hair on him, wearing beat-up overalls. Perhaps the most disturbing is that he had folds of skin all over his body. Imagine the Michelin man, but this is on his face, arms and chest. Everywhere with these weird layers. He's also armed with a shotgun, staring intently at us. He just stood there and watched as we grab anything important and speed out of there. He walked slowly back into the forest and we never saw him again. Around 8-10 to ten years ago, I was at a lake way out in the woods on some land that my dad owned. I was alone aside from my dog, a terrier. I had only been fishing on the little pier in the southeast corner for about 10 minutes when I get an almost overwhelming feeling of being in danger and then notice something or someone watching me from the tree line on the opposite side of the lake. I was a kid but somehow keep composure. For some reason, I felt it important that whatever it was did not know I was aware of them. Anyway, it started moving slowly from tree to tree, near taking its eye off me, but never truly facing away from me. The lake is about 70 yards wide, so I can't really see details, but I know where they're facing. After realising that it was following me, I pulled my pole down and walked down the pier and up the bank towards the trail back of our cabin, which is about a quarter of a mile away. Once I hit the tree line, I bolted to the cabin and waited there with one of my dad's guns until my parents got home. The only witness I had was my dog and he saw it as well. I know because when he saw the figure, he instantly starts growling in a low tone until I make him stop. I have no idea who or what it could have been or what the intentions are, but they're most certainly not good. This took place in southeast Mississippi near the Alabama border back in the 90s. We didn't live there, but we spent most weekends up there. I know it couldn't have been a normal person because our nearest neighbour was a very old couple who literally lived miles away. Aside from the lake area that our cabin's on, the surroundings very thick forest. The figure was extremely tall as well. I have a very good memory, especially for details. Also shortly before I noticed it, I got a very strong feeling that I was being watched. 
I never felt safe there again, and I was so glad my dad sold it. This incident happened to me when I was younger, probably around 19 or 20. I used to drive around the countryside in the woods for hours on end, up to literally 6 hours, smoke cigarettes while I listened to music daydreaming. I've been through a lot, so this is a nice way for me to let off steam and digest all the badness that happened to me in the past few years. There is a route that goes into the southern part of my state and eventually takes you to Maryland, if I'm not mistaken. If you keep going all the way, it will eventually take you to Florida. It was a road I found to be very fond as, as it intersected with a lot of interesting places. It could take you to cities and beaches alike, all the while somehow remaining isolated and rural. On one of those day trips, I was driving through a heavily wooded area that opens up into a field lined with trees on my left. I was pretty zoned out at this point, but something on the side of the road immediately caught my attention. In fact, it even seemed that time slowed, or I could see this apparition more vividly than any other thing I've ever seen in my life. What I saw was an older, balding man, dressed in a full Catholic priest garb. His mouth is open, appearing to be in grief, screaming at the sky. He was standing in front of a dead deer, a buck. From what I recall, it was around three points, maybe four. Behind the deer was a 1970s Crown Vic style police car with its lights on. It had no markings on it whatsoever to signify what country it's from, and no one's in the vehicle. I don't even think it had an engine running sound. It appeared as though the vehicle had been parked there all day. The other odd thing about this vehicle is that it has no damage on the front end to show that it's responsible for hitting the deer, nor was there any blood or anything. The deer seems fine. Taking a step back, trying to think of what I saw, it had the appearance of being staged or set up somehow, as if it was a prop for a movie. Everything was just so odd. For the speed I was travelling at, the glance I cast on this spectacle was only 4 seconds, but it so abruptly singed into my mind now. I have never seen anything like it. For some reason I started crying after seeing it. Did the forces that shape time or something just merge and I saw something from back then? I don't know, I've even been on the same spot from this trip, and there's never a trace of it, not even the body of the deer or tyre tracks from the police car that could be seen. Like a breeze, it was gone. A thing so out of place it could not have been from its surroundings. I have no answers to any of these questions. Only a lack of closure for something that's scarring my brain.